So I have been doing uh, deep learning maybe over about 10 years. I mean, I did a PhD at Stanford under Professor Andrew Ng. So I was pretty much the first student in his group uh, starting doing uh, deep learning for a PhD. And also it was the beginning uh, period uh, where uh, other labs uh, had some also uh, like very uh, emerging research on deep learning. So, um, so since then I got a PhD in 2010 um, and then moved to Michigan uh, as a system professor. So my work is about learning a representation that can find some invariant representation that can do well on uh, many different uh, classification tasks. And also, more recently, I've been working on uh, representations can, that can be useful for doing inference and reasoning. Uh, and in terms of application, I have been working on computer vision problems quite extensively, ranging uh, many different type of questions such as uh, image classification, object detection, segmentation, and so on. Uh, I also work on a problem called multimodal learning, which means that we want to find some high-level uh, deep representation that can connect many different heterogeneous types of uh, input modalities, such as images and text, or uh, audio and video, and also other time series data. So how to find a good shared representation among these heterogeneous input data is one of the uh, research themes I have been uh, working on. So at that time, there was some interest in how to build uh, some algorithm that behave like uh, uh, some uh, brain. I mean, so that was a very high level uh, motivation. Uh, uh, but I've been always interested in uh, building some general purpose uh, algorithms uh, that can somehow learn everything from scratch. So um, I was influenced by uh, people like uh, Bruno Oshausen and Tommy Poggio. Um, and they, they developed models uh, such as sparse coding and hierarchical uh, max uh, that kind of explains the early visual cortex. So, there has been some evidence that if you do some learning uh, and build some hierarchical structure, um, you can learn some interesting features that it can explain the phenomena uh, that happens in the brain. So that was one motivation. Uh, uh, but in general, I also have been very interested in how to build a general purpose machinery uh, that can just learn from the data without uh, too much uh, engineering of the like, low level features. Um, yeah. So I feel that one big application would be a medical uh, domain, so uh, building some smart algorithms that can assist on doctors in uh, diagnosis and other decision making will be extremely helpful. And uh, also lots of uh, hospitals and companies uh, and other um, uh, research labs are interested in uh, building deep, deep learning systems for uh, medical applications. So. It looks very promising to me. Another interesting, very exciting application area is some kind of uh, building an agent. So personal assistant agent uh, that can help humans to uh, do some, uh, some intelligent tasks uh, and save time and maybe give some advice. Uh, so um, there, are, there are many different application areas that can be uh, built. Uh, but this will require some maybe new class of learning algorithms that can interact with humans and also make some sequential decision making. So in that context, uh, maybe more development in reinforcement learning uh, or uh, so-called deep re reinforcement learning will be important. Um, and also uh, one challenge is how to deal with a small number of, uh, small amount of label data. So. Um, so how to learn a good system without having to rely on huge number of manual label, uh, that will be also important challenge in especially ha like tackling some important problems in medicine. So uh, yeah, one, one question is really about this, uh, how to start with like 
like very little prior knowledge or how to start with not so many labels um, and also how do we actually make the learning algorithm to somehow interact with the environment and uh, learn from interaction so uh, one motivating example is robots so robots would actually uh, I mean ideally I mean you can think about humans as also some sort of agent who actually can learn by interacting with the environment or interacting with the object so uh, potentially, if we have really great progress in robotics and deep learning, uh, it's it, it may be possible that robots can also just uh, start exploring the world and then learn something uh, useful out of just uh, doing this interaction. So in order to solve this problem, I think that uh, there's a lot of challenges in solving perception and also decision making, control and all things putting together. So. Uh, it's a challenging problem, but at the same time, it sounds very exciting to me. Yeah. yeah, I'm personally most interested in uh, combining uh, deep learning and reinforcement learning because I believe that uh, building some agent that can interact and perform actions in the real world is uh, very, very important and also it will bring much more value than just doing perception. So, for example, just recognizing images, it's useful, but uh, in order to, I mean, build some uh, high value uh, uh, activities, I mean, it's much more useful if the agent can perform some action on top of the perception. Um, so, uh, in order to solve this problem, I think reinforcement learning is the one critical bottleneck of uh, this, uh, this problem. So, uh, I believe that uh, deep reinforcement learning is uh, one of the most uh, exciting and uh, frontiers of deep learning. Yeah. Um, yeah, I love uh, just listening to many uh, broad, like broad range of speakers uh, who uh, are uh, some of are from academia and some of are from uh, startups. Uh, Especially, I'm interested in uh, how deep learning can be used in uh, useful in many uh, some industrial applications and also emerging uh, topics in startups. So it was a very uh, interesting and exciting uh, topics. And also, I liked uh, about uh, how to learn some textual relationships um, from the uh, using deep learning uh, algorithms. So it was a talk by uh, Professor Andrew McCallum. So I. I enjoyed uh, the talk particularly, yeah.